Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel and continuing after the cafe sketch that I did in my previous video, I got really inspired by the street view here on Laurier Avenue and I'm going to sketch uh, the scenery right here, putting my sketchbook on a concrete uh, column or slab. So before I sketch, I'd, I'd like to take about a minute or two to visualize the size and placement of the major elements. And the rest of the video is going to be in real, real time speed, okay, without any editing. So I'm beginning with the left side because I'm right handed. I like to start drawing from the left first, kind of laying out the three dimensional shape of the building, which is a prism that we can see two sides of it. And now I am drawing this square diamond shape of the, uh, the bicycle lane traffic sign and the smaller one underneath it. And then drawing the pole supporting the traffic signs. Now connecting the traffic sign on the left with a pedestrian, a man walking away from me starting to draw his head, his body and legs crossing in walking gesture very quickly. And then adding another, his, his friend or family member walking with him. And here I am drawing the bicycle wheel and the bars of a bike. On, right underneath the sign and connecting the right side of the bike with a construction cone and another one overlapping behind. There are always constructions going on around Montreal. And cycling is a really uh, popular transportation in Montreal and also in Vancouver as well. Now I'm starting to add a window for the top floor of this of this uh, building and adding the one right next to it, aligning on the same vertical line, adding some accentuation in the middle to show the dark gap inside the glass to show the depths of the interior with dark ink accentuations and the first floor window. So that's the, uh, the side of the building facing me, very straightforward shapes. And now these windows are very foreshortened. So when you're sketching anything, you have to be aware of the angle you're looking at them and trust what you see. And now I'm connecting the street lamp with, um, with the building. It's overlapping pretty much right on top of the building in front of it finishing the right side of the building. Can't really see the outline, but I could see uh, these foliages covering most of the right side or the right side outline of the building. I'm using pretty gentle pressure and relaxing my fingers and wrists to draw those soft uh, branches and twigs. And adding some more, just add as many soft uh, twigs that I could see. When you're drawing trees, you don't have to draw every single branch or twig that's on there. And moving on, I am drawing another person crossing the street. The legs could be really tricky to draw because they always move. And just a, like a, in a crisscross gesture. And moving backwards to the building. Just to add some more foliages, very loose outlines. We can't really see the absolute outline of trees, especially in the fall when the foliages are getting really loose. It's very hard to tell the outline. So no outline, just you know, keep the lines broken. That's fine. It's okay to have you know, a sense of uncertainty when you're drawing. You don't have to make every single thing crystal clear. You can always uh, be flexible and use these loose and broken lines. Adding a bit of detail of things in the distance in very abstract little dots and short lines. And when I'm drawing these loose outlines of trees, I'm barely looking at the paper and start judging what comes out on here. 
So I do take a glance at the paper, and most of the time I am actually looking at the real things in front of me. Now here's a little car in a far distance underneath the foliages, and some more tiny little structures on the bottom of those trees. And just adding some squiggly textures for the foliages here and there. I don't want to add too much because these trees are in the distance and they don't need too much details, just a tiny bit here and there, a couple of little squiggles and just let go, move on to the next tree. There's probably another person there in the distance. Kind of like stretching my back a little bit. I'm actually standing and sketching this, leaning down on the concrete table. Here, there's another traffic lamp in the distance. It looks very tiny compared to the one on the left because it's in the distance and it looks shorter too. Adding some more people in the far distance. Comparing with these, those people on the uh, left side, it really creates a sense of depth. And drawing this important line that defines perspective. And this line going upwards. And yeah, another building here with the uh, traffic lamp overlapping on top. A sign in the middle of the pole and a diamond shaped traffic sign there. Just keep connecting one little shape after another. So as you can see, we only need very few lines to define the perspective of a scenery. After that, I'm just adding um, less important details. Okay, so for like, for example, these people. Different people, when we're sketching the same scenery, we might decide to add these kind of details differently. Maybe you want to add a person in, in another spot. And here I am drawing this car in the foreground. Yeah, okay. So I am not a big fan of cars, but yeah, they are important elements in an urban sketch. Just trying to finish the upper right side. There's a little roof sticking up attic area, some more, They're all going upwards towards the right because it's a one point perspective and the sidewalk line is going downwards towards the right. So once the general perspective is laid out pretty well, as you can see up to now, um, the inner details on this building are less important than we could be really loose and not overthink. So I just added a couple lines to show um, balcony railings and a staircase in a very abstract way. And another staircase was very simple lines. This is how I simplify because I don't want to stand here for like an hour to sketch this scenery and adding some simple little uh, loose shapes to show windows, extremely foreshortened windows for that building in the middle. And some more uh, window frames, you know, part, part of the building that sticks out and little prism shapes, doorways. So another a staircase and a very simple row of lines. Some more windows, extremely foreshortened. And keep adding more, a lot of repetitions. And um, the windows, you know, around the middle ground and closer to the foreground, they're getting less and less foreshortened. So they, they could look a little bit wider. Yeah, just finishing this attic area. This is how I simplify it. It's not exactly the same as the real scenery. I'm just trying to summarize this very complicated building. Yeah, some more windows for the uh, for the upper floor. So I am trying to simplify, but at the same time, I am also trying 
to show the、uh, character of the buildings in Montreal. So here, here as you can see, I'm adding some more staircase over here.、Um, staircases are very common in Montreal residential buildings. Yeah, this is very much like a ladder. And above that, there is the entrance on that second floor there. Very foreshortened windows. Super thin shapes, almost almost lines. And adding this platform, we can see the bottom of the platform of balconies. We are on the street level, looking at higher higher floors, and some more windows. Now these windows are getting slightly less foreshortened because they're closer to me, and another bottom of a balcony platform. So as I mentioned before, drawing techniques could be really easy. What I'm drawing right now is very easy for people to copy, but it's actually very challenging to simplify what you see in in a real life situation. Yeah, here's another staircase. It's very fun to have, you know, this staircase kind of joining the other one. Very nicely designed. And bushes underneath. Yeah, and adding some more doorways over there. Now I I could feel the、uh, characters of these buildings for the staircases. And the windows, especially the very top of the building. So all of these、um, combinations of simple lines and shapes it really tells the、uh, characters of a typical Montreal street. Adding a couple more details for the things in the distance. We don't have to know what those things are. Just use very quick squiggles to define there's like something there. Trying to divide. The division lines between those trees in the back. Adding another car in the middle ground. And when we're sketching on location, especially sketching in a kind of discomfortable position, standing on the side of the street, leaning down,、uh, we can't expect our line works and paintings to be, you know, so perfect. Like you know, sitting comfortably in a studio. And that's okay. That's the nature of sketching on location. And here I'm adding this pretty important loose line that further defines the perspective. This line's going inwards to the middle to join the vanishing point. And I see I need to add another important line here on the very left side. Here it really helps to. Even further, they find the perspective. As you can see, all the lines are going inwards towards somewhere in the middle. There's a vanishing point. We don't have to know exactly where the vanishing point is. This is a really common one-point perspective of a street. When you're standing in the middle of the street, you're looking at the buildings on your left, on your right, things in the middle. Okay, so now I am ready to paint watercolors, just like a drawing process. This part of the video is、um, absolutely unedited, with no time、uh, cut out in between each brushstroke. So by having、um, some real-time videos like this once in a while, I think it really helps to answer many of your questions. Okay, because there's no pauses, there's nothing cut out, there's no waiting time in between the layers of paint. So now I'm just wetting the sky area first with clear water. So the ink is actually a little bit dissolved. It's not a hundred percent waterproof, especially when you're drawing really quickly and in cold temperature. So now I'm adding a little bit of mix of cerulean blue. With a little bit of green, the bottom of the sky later in the afternoon is this fresh, light turquoise or minty color. And then gradually, I am blending on a bit of cerulean blue. This is wet into wet. So right now, I'm wrapping around this white puffy cloud. 
and just moving on my brush stroke, keeping the paint pretty translucent. The color of the sky is, most of the time, is this kind of translucent tone, the diluted cerulean blue, nice and soft. Yeah, and just keeping the sky really simple. Um, keep those two little puffy clouds nice and clear without any um, shade in it. And now moving on, it's time to move on. I'm pretty happy with the sky. It's good to keep it simple and not overwork on it. So just wetting the, uh, the street area with clear water. Yeah, so the ink is actually dissolving a little bit. Because it's not completely dried, the ink still stays on the surface. That's okay, I like the, the kind of slight bit of rustic feeling with the uh, dissolving black ink. And now I am putting on a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow, or medium yellow, with a slight bit of um, orange and brown. This is almost just water. This is the color of the foliages um, reflecting onto the street. And also the sunshine, the warm sunshine color reflecting onto the street. Putting on a little bit of um, lime green mixed with a slight bit of yellow orange. For the bush here on the very right hand side. So painting in autumn is actually pretty good because the paint, um, it won't dry too fast. So now wet onto wet. Um, ultramarine blue. For the uh, shadow area on the street mixing in a little bit of royal purple into the ultramarine blue to get this purplish gray. Nice and soft. This is the kind of effect I want, that I want. The previous layer is just moist enough for this shadow color to blend with it. Okay, and moving on. Without over stirring that area, I am moving on to the next area. Just wetting the foliages in the middle with clear water. Punching on this bit of um, medium yellow. Medium yellow mixed in with a bit of orange. And also lime greens. I'm also constantly um, changing the color on my brush tip. Every couple brush strokes. Because I could see and feel so many colors in these trees. And this tree in the middle, I think it's, it's a different species. Um, it's kind of like a pink purplish color. So just um, Crinacodon Rose mixed in with a little bit of uh, royal purple. Just for this tree here in the middle, it stands out really well. Again, as you can see, my brush strokes are really quick. I'm not over stirring. So just, you know, punching on using loose brush strokes and let go. Um, the power of gravity is going to draw these colors together, merging them very softly together without us controlling too much. And putting on a bit of viridian green on there. The temperature today, I think, is about um, 8 degrees Celsius. If it's in the summer, in like a 25 degrees Celsius temperature, these colors... Uh, are going to dry really fast. So it's going to be very challenging to do wet into wet like this on a hot summer day. So yeah, painting in autumn is actually perfect. Especially for a good wet into wet blendings. Putting on a bit of uh, more pinkish purple there. And viridian green. Nice and loose. I'm using my... Um, this is still another large tip round brush, but less, less watery compared to the one that I used before. So I have like two water brushes. This one I'm using right now is large tip, but there's less water coming down from, from the cartridge. So it's very easy to have like um, more tighter or solid washes. Like this one I have is 
cadmium yellow and a bit of orange. So this is the warm color of the sunshine hitting the top of this building. And now comes this contrasting color, raw umber, wet into wet. Okay, so just putting this color on, just let it blend with the warm yellow. Having a bit of brush mark is actually good. We don't need that perfect gradients or merging of colors. And some more raw umber on this side of the building, which is pretty much in shade. And putting on a bit of uh, Viridian Green, mixing a tiny bit of um, burnt sienna into Viridian Green to create a darker tone of green for the bottom of these trees. And using quick brush strokes to show the texture of the, uh, the leaves. And same for here. Most of the time, um, the shape color of trees are around the bottom. So my brush mark is, is short and a little squiggly to show the, uh, the foliage form. And now I am putting on some diluted blue to show the color of the sky reflecting onto the glasses of the window panels and move on. Now I'm just wetting this row of houses with clear water. The reason I'm wetting the area always with clear water is that I want it like a soft effect of the paint spreading out on paper and not dry brushing. And putting on this mix of um, yellow and orange Nice and loose. So when you're painting, when you're applying paint on paper, you don't have to worry about making like a perfect flat wash. The traces of brush mark is showing the aliveness of your sensibility to what you see and your personal expressions. And that's the first layer for this building on the right. And now I'm putting on a slight bit of um, burnt sienna here and there as I see. So all the surfaces in the world during daylight, they're never completely just like flat, one singular color. It's always like a combination of two or three or more different tones of the same color family. So in this case, I have orange, brown, and then later on, I'm gonna have like a darker tone of brown around the bottom for the shaded areas. Okay, and now I am mixing my own gray with blue, green, and a little bit of royal purple. Painting in these cars very loosely because most cars are metallic. They kind of shine partially in certain areas. So they shouldn't be like a solid gray. So gray in two different tones and two brush marks because these are tiny little shapes. And putting on these vibrant oranges, the orange color for the cones, the stripes on the cones. The color on the cones is really helping you, the viewer, draw the viewer's eyes into this sketch. Adding some contrast around the bottom of those foliages. And yeah, this bush in these slightly more contrast with viridian green and a little bit of brown on the bottom. Just kind of try to blend, blend it together with a dried layer before it. And when you're painting watercolors, don't stress about, you know, having a really high ex expectation with the blending or certain effects. Yeah, just let go. And just adding a little contrast underneath the cars and the bushes and the bush over there. Underneath the cones and these slight bit of gray cast shadows from those objects.
Okay, so now I see a slight bit of gray cloud around right above those foliages in the middle. Let's see, maybe I'll not add that. It's mixing a slight bit of gray. Just very careful with it. Dilute it by cleaning my water brush and rubbing that area again so this gray is diluted. I don't want it to look too harsh. Well, I guess I would just keep the sky really simple and clean. Some more cat shadows underneath the edges of these things. And now it's time to add contrast it's using raw umber. If you don't have raw umber, you could mix ultramarine blue or cobalt blue into brown or burnt sienna. The bottom of this row of houses is in shade. So just adding that, so softly transitioning upwards into a warmer color. The sun is kind of shining on, on top of these houses. Yes, like even bit more contrast around the staircases and the doors. The shadows. Just some final polish. And putting on this um, last bit of diluted gray on the sign in the middle of the street lamp. That's pretty much it. Here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me about 25 minutes to draw and paint. Here is my setup on this uh, construction concrete thing. With spikes around it. So if you paint really quickly, you won't see a huge change in terms of the lighting condition. You could capture the lighting condition more accurately. Yeah, so the painting, it took me about, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes. So thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update this channel two to three times a week. And I will see you again very soon next time. Have a great weekend, everyone.